How's it going guys? And hello from Central Oregon. The past few days I was over in Redmond at the Overland Expo. It was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun, so many amazing vehicles and I met so many awesome people. I think it would feel wrong to go to the Overland Expo and not do any camping or overlanding myself. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. I got the Sequoia behind me. We're in Central Oregon, a place I really haven't done much truck camping. And we're gonna go explore, try and find a free dispersed camping site. So come along with me today. It's gonna be great. One other note too, if you didn't watch my last video, you may notice the Sequoia is looking a little different. I got new wheels, new tires, and I'm so excited to test them out. I did clean the truck a couple days ago before this trip. I don't think it's gonna last too long. Uh, all of this red rock and sand and dust, it's gonna get pretty filthy. Unfortunately, all good things do come to an end. All clean things do get dirty, but that's okay. It's always worth getting the truck dirty if it means going out and doing some exploring. So let's go ahead and uh, start driving. You guys may be able to tell but the sequoia might sound a little bit different i did recently do a muffler delete now that the sequoia is starting to look a little bit cooler with the new wheels and tires i thought it was time for it to sound cool too so well i don't know exactly where i plan to camp tonight my dad was over in this area a couple weeks ago doing a bike camping trip with some of his friends and he found a couple spots that he thought would be pretty sweet for truck camping so uh, he gave me a couple coordinates and I'm going to go check those out today. Honestly, this part of Oregon, Central Oregon, there are hundreds and hundreds of potential camping spots. So if either of these are occupied or don't work out, I feel pretty confident that we can find something else that will be just as awesome. At this point, I think the Sequoia might honestly be red by the time we get to the top. Uh, it is so dusty out here, but these views are already worth it. Curious to go see what the view is like kind of out on this ridge here. See if I can see any of the mountains because there are so many in Central Oregon area. I think this might be the spot where I spend the night. Uh, the spot was open, there isn't anyone else here so far and it's a great spot. There's some shade. I'm standing in the shade of this tree right now. There's a huge flat area. There's a couple of different fire pits where people have definitely camped and cooked food before. So I was kind of debating whether or not I wanted to go down and explore some of the other trails down below that I had seen, but it took like an hour to drive up here and this is a great spot. It was open. So I think I might spend the night here and maybe do some exploring of the lower trails another day. So 
um, yeah, awesome spot. So I am deciding to go back down and go check out this other spot. Um, this will be a great spot to have in the future, but definitely a spot I think for colder months when the bees aren't here because they are so, so annoying and just make it really hard to spend time outside. making my way back down the trail. Awesome views. And I just wish those bees weren't so aggressive because that would've been such an awesome spot, but nothing I can do about that. So I'm gonna continue searching and find another spot. So three hours later, I am right back where I started. Um, it's still worth the trip up there because that would be an awesome spot when it is maybe a bit colder and the bees aren't there. A random change of plans, you can kind of see behind me. I found this spot just in the woods, which is definitely not what I was expecting. I was definitely looking for a spot that had a viewpoint kind of up on the mountains where I could watch the sunset. I was just driving by and saw this pull off, decided to check it out. And honestly, this is a pretty sweet spot. Kind of feeling like I might just chill here for the night. I think what can make truck camping so awesome is if you can keep an open mind and just be willing to do exploring, you can find spots that are really amazing and spots that you would otherwise drive right by. This is pretty much the opposite of a big viewpoint. This is just a little tucked away spot in the forest. And yet for some reason, this is probably one of my favorite spots I've ever been to. The creek that I was just sitting at is like right behind me. And I turn around and the sequoia is right there. We're talking like 150 feet or so from the sequoia to this creek. Tonight I'm going for this pad thai. Uh, it's from Backpacker's Pantry. I've had it before on camping trips and I remember it being pretty good. I don't know if that was because I was really hungry or not, but um, I guess I'll find out. I promise you guys the version 2 camping setup build is coming soon so stay tuned. I might just wait a little bit until some of the weather starts to get worse because while it's so nice out I want to be out camping. Our water is boiling. It's time to pour out exactly one and three quarters of a cup. Uh, we're going to do the best we can. Hey Siri, set the timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes starting now. I just wanted to mention that with this spot, you could pretty much get here in any car. And this is just a perfect example and reminder, even for me, that you don't always need a big truck with 4x4 to get to some of the most amazing places. a success the pod tie was actually pretty good and I didn't spill any on my new white shirt so it's a win-win the Sun is starting to go down now the light is just beautiful I'm gonna head back down to the creek and just hang out there for a bit I promise
probably haven't shown my kind of sleeping or camping setup a ton or if I have it's been a long time so I kind of wanted just to show you guys quickly what my summer camping setup looks like so let's go ahead and take a look you'll notice that it's pretty dark in here right now the reason for that is I have this reflectix material on all of the windows I have a piece for the back here too um, you can buy reflectix at Home Depot Lowe's any hardware store and basically what I did is I just cut it to shape for each of the windows and then on the outside I covered it in black duct tape so it's super dark um, from the outside you can't see anything on the inside it's fully black this just helps with privacy and it also provides a little bit of warmth which isn't really necessary in the summer but does help in the winter in the front I just have a black drape that I pretty much cut in half and then I just have a couple A clamps, um, one on each handle. Here, I'll show you guys. I have a couple A clamps on this handle here, just holding it in place. So it's the same thing on the other side. That black drape just uh, blocks everything out from the front. So I didn't have to do reflectix for the front windows and the windshield. The reflectix does take a while to cut out and black out. Um, so this was kind of the lazy version of doing that, but it works really well. I'll show you guys um, from the front it's just this black drape so the pieces of reflectix and the drape are kind of what I have for privacy and keeping everything dark at night as far as the sleeping setup goes I did go really cheap with this but honestly it's worked perfectly fine for me so I basically have a foam pad let's see if I can show you guys I got it from Home Depot it was like 20 bucks and it's six feet in length it's just pretty much a plain piece of foam it's like three inches in height six feet in length and uh, it was, again like it was 20 bucks so it was like the cheapest uh, thing I could find and it's honestly a lot better than any of the camping sleeping pads I had tried those in the past but those are so thin even the inflatable ones I didn't like very much so for 20 bucks I highly recommend this um, just go to Home Depot Lowe's might have it too and just pick up a piece of foam if you're looking for a cheap option I just have a bed sheet covering it so it's not like the scratchy foam material the sheet just pretty much always stays on there if I can and I guess I should say I really don't like sleeping bags so if I can I try to just use a blanket most of the time in the summer I found that it's warm enough um, so I just have one kind of fuzzy blanket and that seems to be enough I do always carry a sleeping bag just in case it does get cold. My first ever truck camping trip actually was awful. It was like 15 degrees and I was freezing the entire time. And um, So I've learned to always carry extra blankets, extra sleeping bag, just to have it just in case. Um, but in the summer, most of the time, just having a blanket is good enough. Lastly, I just have two normal pillows if you're truck camping if you're car camping most of the time you have more room than a hiking or backpacking trip so i always do bring full-size pillows love having them and uh, just helps make it super comfortable so that's kind of a look at my camping setup i just wanted to kind of show you guys what the summer setup looks like and talk more about that because i don't think i've talked much about it on my channel so if you have any questions about this definitely feel free to drop a comment below or send me a message on instagram my instagram is linked in the description or it's just max a peters i'm always happy to answer questions so feel free to reach out. Thanks for coming along with me today and I'll see you guys in the morning.
Also, I'd love to know how you guys do dishes when you're camping. I haven't found a great way yet, uh, and I haven't looked into it too much, but that's also something that I want to improve on, especially when I do my version two build, is making it easier to clean utensils, pots, all of that stuff um, after cooking. So let me know uh, if you have any preferred methods or setups that work good for doing dishes. Alright guys, well it is almost 11 o'clock now and as much as I would love to just spend the whole day here, I think it's time to pack up and head out. It's been another absolutely amazing trip. I still honestly just can't believe that there are this many free campsites around Oregon and how amazing some of these campsites are. I feel so grateful to have found this spot and for the chance to spend the night here and that really goes for all of my truck camping trips as well. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you guys could like and subscribe, any support from my channel really does help me out and allows me to keep going on these trips and making this content for you guys. So I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for coming along and I'll see you guys in the next one.